then we give it a good stir. I always want to make sure the glue is mixed very well. That's uh, very important. So, okay, well, I'm just going to start on the left side. You probably can't tell, but I did uh, mark those there. And um, I'm going to just set my pins in. Start my pins um, on this side. Got a little bit of glue on them there. There we go. A little bit of glue. Okay. all in there. Pretty self-explanatory there. But um, get that there. Get my big one. Okay. Then I'm going to the left side. First, and uh, we got a house full of people here. Uh, just been trying and trying to get a quiet time to do this, and so asking everyone to be quiet, but they're being a little noisy. But uh, that's all right. Not the end of the world. And I'm just gonna make sure I fill these uh, little divots with glue. Just make sure there's enough glue to go go on them there. Um, the rest of the surface is covered on the tang there, but uh, fill in these little divots. As you can see there that, that I drilled. Okie dokie. <clears throat> then I'll we'll slide the pins through just a little bit. This is the moment of truth here, man. Hoping everything lines up. If it doesn't line up. Pressing. Okay, well, yeah, it lines up. All my pins are through. Okay. Looks like doing okay. This is long cure epoxy, so I've got I've got plenty of time here as long as I just keep moving. I, I don't even know how long uh, I've got, but uh, it's still probably at least a half half hour work time 30 minutes make sure we're filling all my other holes those little holes there with it aren't getting any pins just uh, you know it's just one more bond glue bond through there and then last of my glue make sure I get my little dimples some glue in those dimples because that really expands the surface area of the adhesion to the scale. So, key dokey. This is always a exciting time, but this is a high adrenaline uh, time for me. Glue up, always, uh, <laughs> always a little shaky. They're not shaky, but always a little nervous. So, all right, so then I'm going to just uh, line up everything here. Get my, looks like I've got my big pin through, other pins through. It's one of the advantages of definitely of using oversized drill bit. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. This series has been so spaced out, as in the build things, times that I've done it, but uh, oversized drill bits, just slightly oversized for these these uh, eighth inch pins, slightly oversized, um, makes a big difference when at this time. I've spent a lot of time pounding pins through, cracking scales, all kinds of crazy stuff like that, but um, we're, we're in business here, and um, so now, just got a paper towel ready, got my acetone here just 
just going to clean off just a little bit here so my clamps I will be clamping this and I'll just make sure the clamps don't stick too much to the scales here of course one of the major points I'm going to be working on very soon here is the top top of the scales there clean that off as best as I can and uh, first I'm going to work on getting a few clamps here so um, let's see here, I'm going to go just one of these standard old ones, I really like these ones, they're, they're cheap, cheap ones, but they, uh, they work well, so, okay, looks like, centered pretty good, I'm just going to kind of clamp her down here. usually just use three and that seems to be plenty as long as I uh, space them out right get this clamp down of course my battery is about to die just give me this gave me the warning but uh, you can kind of get the idea uh, I'm just going to clean up the top here um, that little glue seepage there, clean off that there, put one more clamp put one more clamp just right at the top and uh, that will hold that will hold that down and uh, then just give these a pretty good tight clamp, let it sit for 24 hours so uh, I'll touch base again here after 24 hours is up after it's all glued and then we'll begin the handle shaping process so awesome Alrighty, well I'm back at her here, out in the sea can. Temperature looks to be about plus five in here. I've had the heat on for about an hour. Just going to do the basic shaping on my old grinder here. Just have a pretty good uh, aluminum oxide belt. And so just going to do the uh, shaping on that. Got my protection on here. We'll get going.
Well, now comes one of my favorite moments in the <laughs> knife making, uh, the making of a knife, and that is oiling the handle. Um, I don't always use teak oil. Sometimes um, I've got some boiled linseed oil, oil here that I'll soak it overnight in sometimes, and, but uh, I'm just going to use teak oil here. So um, get uh, get some on this little napkin here. Get get this on our wedge wood. Good, looking pretty good. I like that. I'll put um, a number of coats on it, um, just to let let it in, let it soak in uh, to the wood. And um, you know, sometimes different woods are oilier, so it won't take quite as much. But um, anyway, let's get, getting it all in there and. Uh, soaked into the wood. Well, the time has come to sharpen the knife here and um, just going to do, I'm not really going to sharpen it with the camera on right now, I'm just using my phone. It's the most crucial part of the knife making process. Um, I guess the final, final part of the knife break making process for sure, so I do not want to wreck the knife. Basically what I do is I just turn the grinder on and then gently with basically just a little pressure or very little just almost the weight of the knife I sharpen it like this two or three passes same way two or three passes and then uh, we get uh, get the knife basically sharp and I'll uh, show you the next process where I take it inside and I'll use uh, my leather strop So here's the basic stropping motion. You can see I already put the logo on. Really happy with that. One of my crispest, most crisp logos I've done. But uh, stropping motion is just basically running it along the edge here like this. And go the other way. All right, hey there everybody. I'm outside getting some nice natural light here. Uh, light's fading fast, but I just wanted to do the, the knife reveal here. Here's the sheath, and uh, really, really very happy with how it turned out. And uh, um, love that uh, combination there with the red thread. And then here we have the knife. Here's the knife, quite, quite happy with it. Pretty good. Uh, logo that's the most crisp of my logos ever been there and uh, the uh, red liners with the wenge wood just looks really really awesome very happy with how it turned out um, grinds a little off on that side as you can see here but uh, other than that it's okay not not the end of the world but uh, yeah really happy really happy with the way it turned out and uh, should be a great skinning knife like I said this is the Esker my new knife model, calling it the Esker, and uh, really, really pleased, really pleased with it. So anyway, that's the Esker model knife, N. Jones knives, and uh, brass, brass pins, black brass liner tube, and uh, all in all, very, very pleased with how it turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed the, the build video. Thanks for, for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch the four parts and uh, appreciate it very much. We'll see you here next time on New Man Explorer.